What's it been like for you? Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, overwhelming in so many ways. Uh, the outpouring of love and support from uh, my family of origin, friends, uh, people in the community, my teammates, all sacrificing a day or two out of their lives to come and uh, support me in this day is, it's, it's kind of hard to put it all in words. And so from an emotional standpoint, it's just overwhelming. I'm, I just have a, a tremendous sense of gratitude for all of that love and support that everyone is showing. Do you have anything written down as to what you're going to say at halftime? No, because uh, <laughs> uh, when you and I talked the other day, you asked me what my emotion was going to be, and I, I, just, I honestly just don't know. Um, so I just wanted it to be more authentic. And uh, a friend of mine is limiting me for t two and a half minutes, so uh, not a whole lot I can say. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't know this to you. Two and a half minutes. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I was just, just kidding. I didn't say that. I'm just kidding. Hans, <laughs> you're, uh, you're an analyst. How would you analyze Alfonso Alves' game? Oh boy. Seriously. Um, I, I like to say it this way. If you wake a ball player up in the middle of the night with no sleep and uh, they're, act, they're reacting on instincts alone, uh, my instincts were to rebound and to block shots. And I just happened to be able to score. But if you needed something immediately, uh, th those are my two uh, prevailing instincts. I was more defensive minded, but happened to have a hook shot, turn around Jay, and, and all of those things. And uh, uh, that's what made playing with the guys that I played with during my time here um, a really cool and unique experience because I felt all of our pieces uh, fit well together. Uh, we had shooters and Joe Frederick early on, um, Jimmy Jackson, Tim Singles, and Emma Bennett kind of rotating through the point guard spot. Damon Sweet, just a dynamic player in transition and off the dribble. And uh, Keith Tower, uh, he and I working uh, in tandem to uh, keep that middle uh, protected. And obviously, if Monty Williams wouldn't have had his heart situation, I felt we had a team that could actually be Elite Eight good, possibly even Final Four good, given all that talent that we had. Your, your aggressive nature on the court, did that always come naturally to you? Uh, naturally. I, <laughs> I've said recently that it was a. I always felt whether true or not, as you know, your your perception is your reality. And I always felt uh, that I was behind and undervalued compared to the players in my class. So when I got to high school, high school in East St. Louis started at the 10th grade. All my peers, Alonzo Mourning, Sean Kemp, Billy Owens, Chris Jackson, all of those guys were so uh, physically more advanced than I was. Not necessarily from a skill standpoint, but just physically so much, so, so far ahead of me. And so as you begin to read articles and magazines and you see in their names all over the place, uh, I, uh, I kind of took that a little bit personally. And uh, that, that's kind of where that came from. And so every time I stepped on the floor, it was from a place of insecurity because I felt inferior at one, on one end. And then at the same time, I just hated losing. And uh, the third part of that is I wanted people who were there watching the game to try to bring them into my experience. So every dunk, every block shot, every time I dove on the floor for a loose ball, uh, I wanted them to feel the passion and the fire that I played with. So that, that kind of sums up those. That well, senior year was kind of a, a unique season, honestly, with, with <laughs> to the, say four, the, the four start, all the upset say, wins, yes. and then the NIT ride. You just kind of rec go back and think about all the, all the, the wins that no one would have predicted and the losses that no one would have thought would happen. Uh, I wish we would have had an opportunity to have a COVID year <laughs> so, <laughs> so we can re-rack that one. Uh, no, you, it was a year laced with uh, incredible highs and just gut-riching lows. Uh, the lowest one for me was that loss to DePaul late. We needed that one to get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, I have a great deal of respect having played in NIT. Extra games allow scouts to be able to see you more and just from a competitive standpoint, you get an opportunity to extend your competitive season. And so I enjoyed it, and yet the crown jewel is getting to the NCAA tournament. My whole purpose in coming here was to try to help uh, be a part of something special that we can uh, first get to the NCAA tournament, obviously get to a second weekend, and then with the group that we had, had Monty stayed healthy, potentially get back to a Final Four. You mentioned that NIT. I, I was younger at these games, those games. It was a, it was strange to have a crowd really embrace the NIT. I think it might be the last time you guys, that, that run, was that's that, that something that you'll kind of take with you as a consolation 
I think that was, but I think part of that was that that's that's why uh, the Notre Dame fans, uh, the local townies, have all been so special to me. Is uh, <laughs> they created a very unique atmosphere, whether we were good or bad. And I think the uh, NIT uh, first three games we played at home were indicative right. of that. And so I've always had a great deal of respect and appreciation uh, for those who would come out and support us the way they did. In fact, I used to have just a side conversation with uh, Connaughton and Jaron Grant and saying, uh, your fans are great, but mine were awesome. <laughs> we had multicolored seats. They used to bang on the uh, the piping up there, and it, it was it was just an electric place to play. I'm very grateful to have had the, to play in front of the fans that I did for three years of my career. Well, LaFonso, coming to Notre Dame is really a 40-year commitment. What has Notre Dame the experience done for you to put you in the position that you are today? Uh, my teammates and I were talking about it last night, and if nothing else, you build up a – uh, a second skin, so to speak, a grit, because academically they don't give you anything here. Um, what you get, what you get is what you earn, and so no one's going to correct the paper for you. If you have a uh, 68 and make it a 78, so you can stay eligible, uh, nobody, no one's going to do work for you. No one, that you, you have to fight, claw, and scratch for what it is that you're pursuing and working for, and I think. My experience here was indicative of that. I was academically ineligible twice. Um, and uh, if I were the president of the, uh, or the chair of the business school, that would have kicked me out. <laughs> and yet uh, they were merciful towards me. And uh, I kind of lost my academic swag because I was a really good student in high school. But having been academically ineligible twice, I kind of lost my, my, my swag there. And so uh, I was able to recapture that. Uh, while I was out and uh, finished almost making the Dean's List twice, I believe. And so in many ways, that's why I kind of, that's one of the things I enjoy about college sports because you're taking boys who are coming into school and you're molding them into young men in the many ways. And that struggle uh, was helpful to me because I got up to a great start in my first two years in the NBA, averaging 15 points and nine rebounds, and then all of a sudden injury after injury after injury. And probably without maybe the poverty that I grew up with and all of the uh, challenges that came with it, combined with the struggle at Notre Dame, uh, I wasn't phased by that, um, th those injuries. It, it, it does something to you. It kind of allows you to be able to create a reserve, a well that you can go to from an experiential standpoint to help you move forward. And, and those things were very valuable for me. And those are two things that I took from here. How's life as an analyst, man? <laughs> it's awesome. I always wanted to coach, uh, but the the commitment of time there compared to the commitment of time that I wanted to give my wife, who's deserving of it, and my kids, uh, is the second best thing. I get a chance to interview and be around some of the greatest minds in all of college basketball. I get a chance to interact with a freshman that, that's coming in who, as I'm talking to him, answering all my questions, but he's looking down because he's kind of <laughs> uncertain of himself and lacks confidence. But then sophomore, junior year, all of a sudden, and now chest is stuck out, head back, and speaking to me with great confidence and clarity. So, and I get a chance to work. I had the privilege of playing in the best league in the world, in the NBA. and. Uh, my second career, six years later, I get a chance to work for the best sports, sports network in the world with um, great talent and great friends and great people to work with there. So I feel very blessed in that way.